What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So in this video, we're going to be moving on to unit testing entity framework and the database repositories. This project that I have, which is the MVC project, if you don't have this project and you're coming here from another video, uh, you can clone this project. You don't have to hook up the database or anything or even get it running. Just um, clone it and we can unit test it as it is because we're going to be testing the repositories, but we're not actually going to be hitting the database. We're, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building a database in memory. And how we're going to be doing that is um, Microsoft or Entity Framework. I think, it, yeah, I think it's actually Entity Framework, or, which is Microsoft. <laughs> is going to give you this extension method called use in memory database and use in memory database allows you to uh, actually have a context but you're building uh, you're not actually putting the data into a real database it uh, loads data into like almost like a memory like the name is like a memory database and it's a good blend between not using the actual database, which is more or less like an integration test. If you're hitting the database, that's more like an integration test. Uh, but it's also, there's other types of testing where you're mock, where you do fakes and you fake I enumerables and data coming back from the database. But I think it's good to actually have the context involved because it's doing a little bit more rigorous testing as opposed to just bringing back the mock or just mocking you know, bringing back data like that, which I, I don't, I don't, I just think it's better to actually do the use in memory database, just my opinion, but you can fake it, you can mock it, but I wouldn't recommend actually uh, using unit tests to actually hit the data. That's something you do not want to do because then it's not a, it's not a real unit test. It's actually a integration test. So just gonna get it, get off my soapbox there, and let's just go ahead. Let's get in here and like, let's actually start building this thing. So we're gonna go here, and we're going to build. I'm just gonna call this repository. This is gonna be a test to test our repository interfaces, and the one that we are going to build. Let's let's go ahead. Let's just do the club. We did club controller, and now we're gonna do just regular uh we're gonna do the club repository now let's go in here so club repository test club repository test call that repository okay club repository test we're gonna go ahead we're gonna add that and choose this to public and this one is going to be a little a uh, little bit different. So what you do, and you could do this many ways, but this is kind of just the way that I uh, built it. And I had to kind of pull this from a bunch of different places. So make sure to smash that like button because uh, number one, there's not a lot of documentation on how to, it, it's so odd because everywhere online, there's so much documentation on everything and there's YouTube videos, but there's almost no videos on how to unit test for some reason. So if you like, if you're liking these, make sure to drop a comment down below and like, because it really helps and make sure, you know, maybe tell me what you don't like. I don't know. <laughs> Just comment because it helps. It helps. All right. Okay. So what we do here is we're going to bring in DB context options builder and just a builder pattern. You don't need to know what a builder pattern is, but you do need to build in your actual DB context. So I'm going to go in here, entity framework core, and you need to build it. You need to bring in, so whatever you called your app, your DB context, that's what you need to bring in. And this project, this is my DB context, but you need to bring in whichever one that you are actually using. And we're putting this all inside of a private method because you want to build this in each test, but you don't want to you don't want to type all this out. So use in memory database. Great. And we're gonna database name and just build a GUID kind of like on the fly. So we're gonna build a uh, GUID and 
for each test that it builds, it's just gonna kind of do it on the fly. And what you want, another thing that you wanna do is you need to actually bring in use memory database because it's a separate it's a separate NuGet package. So we're gonna to need to go in here. We're gonna to go to need to go to manage NuGet packages and in memory. Yep. And this provides an in memory database for uh, for testing purposes, which is absolutely phenomenal. That's awesome. It's super powerful, it's fast. It's amazing, and I can't believe, like, the. I mean, I can see, you know, everybody's got their kind of, like, own way of doing tests, but it's kind of crazy that you just don't hear that much about it. Like, people don't talk about that much because it's pretty sweet. So var database context is equal to new. Then we're going to actually have to create our app. We're going to create our application DB context. Then we're going to go down here, database context. Um, we need to go ensure created um, so if the database exists and has any tables then no action is taken nothing is done to ensure the database schema is compatible if it exists but does not have the okay just make sure I put that there all right so now we're going to make a for loop here and we're just going to um, fill the database with uh, let me see, so database context dot close count async and make sure this is greater than zero and we're just going to fill the database with a little bit of uh, uh, seed data. So go in here you don't have to type all this out. You can go to my GitHub and I'll have all of this for you over there. You can type it out if you want to, but what I did is I just literally brought this in from uh, the database seed file and just copied and pasted it there. Then at the bottom here, um, <clears throat> let me see, we still gotta, so we closed out that if, got that. And we actually need to do a for loop. So we're gonna, because we need to, so i greater than 10, we need to put that, we need to wrap that a for loop, make that look a little bit better. Then we're gonna go down here, and then after we get done, we're going to return the database context. And that is going to be our private methods so that we don't have to automatically inject all that stuff. We don't have to um, put that in every single test case. So, so then we're gonna go down in here, go public async, because we have to make this async because this function actually has async functions with it. So we're gonna go club repository, that is the name of the class. And we are going to test the add, which is going to be one of the more simpler ones. So it's gonna be returns bool. So var club is equal to, we're just gonna create just a new, just a fake club that we're gonna to add to the database. We're gonna go var club in here. And we need to put, there's nothing actually being returned in here. And then once again, I'm just gonna copy, I'm actually gonna take this up here. I'm gonna go ahead and toss that in there. And boom. So then what we do is we take our DB context and then we're going to await then we're gonna go get, we're gonna bring in that private function that we just created up here. And for, then we're gonna, then we're going to, okay, so this is all at, uh, a range up here. So let's actually make sure that we're following good guideline or good coding conventions and at least putting up. 
So then we're going to act. And actually, the we got to bring in the club repository. So we're going to bring in that. And it's going to be so club. Club repository. And we're going to new this up. And we could just have that all up there, but I didn't actually add a constructor to this. I don't know why. It would actually probably be better to actually put that up in a constructor, but just for this case, um, I didn't do that, so it, but it's okay. We'll still be able to we'll still be able to run this. Then what you want to do, so you look over here, and we've we've already got our context mocked. We've already got so what the only thing that we actually need to pass into this is our DB context, and that's great because it's actually like a, it's a real context. And it's awesome. So now we're going to go in here. So our result is going to be our club repository. So we've already created that. And we're going to go add. Then we're going to go ahead and put in a club. And assert. So the results, we're going to use fluent assertions. Feel free to choose whichever type that you want. And because it's a bool, we just want to test if it's returning true. And I think that that should be sufficient enough given that it's just a um, pretty simple one line. Great, so fingers crossed this thing works. Six seated, great. All right, let's go in here and let's actually look at the debugger. Let's like see what's going on here. Actually, I'm kind of curious what's, uh, I remember looking at what the DB context looked like, but it's actually pretty amazing how elegant this use in memory database is. And like, if you look at the test, like we'll, we'll look at it here in a second, it's actually pretty quick too. So we're gonna go in here and let me see. So right now it's false because it hasn't ran yet. So it's gonna go step in, it's gonna do it's going to return save. OK, great. It actually returns true. And then as you can see here, we actually have our whole entire context. Got our database. We've got all of our uh, entity framework stuff in there. So you've got like change tracking. You've got all types of cool stuff that you can mess with. It's all testable and it's pretty robust too. So go ahead and assert should be true. Okay, so let's go ahead here and let's actually test the get, by, get ID by async. And that should be enough to kind of get you in the right direction and get you to the point where you can pretty much unit test uh, any of these repositories and it should be relatively easy for you. Once you've gotten this part set, set up and figured out, Everything else is downhill from here. So let's go ahead. We're gonna go ahead. We're gonna write one more, and we're gonna do one where we're not actually creating anything. We're getting stuff. So we're gonna go in here. We go public async void. Then we're gonna go club repository. Then we're gonna go get by id async. Then we're gonna go this. The expected result is that this returns a club. And that's going to be our expected result. Then once again, we need to bring in our context. So this is going to be get, yeah, get DB context. And then in here, we're going to go club repository. And we're going to go new club. And so we're going to go make sure you got your range. And we're going to go bring one, bring this down here. And we're going to go act. Then, of course, we're going to have a search right here. So we're going to have club repository. 
and we're going to pass in that DB context because we need to have that DB context in there. Otherwise, this method will not be able to be acted on because in order for, and I talked about this in a previous video, if you uh, aren't familiar, the reason, one of the reasons that we have to do this is because in order for this, uh, these methods to actually work, the constructor mandatory or requires, it's mandatory, it's required that you pass in that context. If we had a empty controller here, or we had a, in there's one that, that's declared, but in our case, uh, you know, we do need that that context. I guess technically, yes, you don't have to, but in our case, it's required. So that's the reason why we had to pass in that database context, because this class that we're testing requires that as a dependency right here, as you can see. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna go, we're gonna go act on it. We're gonna go bar results, and that is equal to club repository dot get by ID async. Then we'll go ahead and here, and we'll just put an ID up here because I think that that's good convention makes it and it makes it look a little bit better looks it makes it look a little bit more readable then we're going to go down to our cert going to use good old fluent assertions not be null so at the very least this should not be null and we'll do a little bit of object checking as well too or uh, type checking and we'll just say be of type task Club and whatever you are testing, um, I think a good way to test this, since we're not actually returning real data, is to just text, check the type and check that it's null. And I think that, in my personal opinion, that should be enough in order to uh, correctly test this. Is you don't want too much, and we're not really returning real data. Um, also. With a lot of these, the change tracking is going to become an issue. So with some of them, what you want to add, and we didn't actually have to add this with our uh, club up here, is if you get change tracking issues, you can add uh, this DB context, whatever repository you're trying to get from, and you can add as no tracking, and that should take care of any type of tracking. If you get like weird tracking issues where it's saying, ID is the same or it'll tell you some type of tracking issue is occurring you can use that and it'll turn off tracking and you should be able to add to it anyway that is going to be the video for how to test repositories in MVC I hope that you guys enjoyed this um, if you did make sure to hit that like button make sure to hit that subscribe button and as always thank you for watching